Hey everybody, it's Matt. I'm making a new Heroclix video. What? It's 2020. I make a new video every year. What a surprise. Um, this year, it's about <laughs> it's about the Fantastic Four Cosmic Clash starter set. Can you believe it? We have Fantastic Four back in Heroclix. I can't believe it. It's been so long. It's been like Galactic Guardians, which was so long ago. Was it like 2006 or something? No, wait. I started playing in 2009. What was it like? 2014 or something? Yeah, my years are all messed up. But still, Fantastic Four is back. Uh, coming in July, uh, that later this month, um, a Fantastic Four set is releasing with more Fantastic Four characters. This is just the first start of it, a, a starter set. It's going to have uh, brand new sculpts we've never seen before that's not even actually used in the main set. It is actually 4th of July when I'm recording this, so you may hear some fireworks. I'm sorry if you do. Can't help it. I've closed all my windows, shut off all my fans. Hopefully it's kind of quiet for this, but I'm, I'm just so excited to get some new Fantastic Four stuff after such a long time of not having Fantastic Four stuff. I, I just, I felt like I needed to make a video to just show off how happy I am. And just for, you know, a little bit of backstory, uh, I started playing the game in 2009. I was getting off of Pokemon, the trading card game, and um, I, I've been watching people play Hero Clicks off and on for a while and uh it looked like a fun game i've always been a big comic book fan so i started collecting pieces from like justice league and avengers i think those were like the what were like the 2007 sets around like the the 10th anniversary of the game all that kind of stuff um and uh i started looking for starter sets and one of, one of the first things i got there was two things I got uh, Legion of Superheroes, and I got the Fantastic Four. And um, ar around that time, Secret Invasion had come out, um, and that's where that that starter was from, the Fantastic Four starter. And there was also LEs in a Secret Invasion set uh, that shared the same sculpts, but had a different set of powers. And I just played the heck out of Fantastic Four. And um, for a while, it was kind of hard to play them because uh, they were all like 75 to 100 point pieces. And it was like, well, how do you make, how do you have multiple pieces? You know, you could have like three Fantastic Four members at 100 points each. Or you could take out one and put a 75 point piece in there, but then you didn't have enough points for another piece. There was very few lower point Fantastic Four pieces. Uh, we got a little bit more as time went on. Galactic Guardians... Um, I think Chaos War, they had LEs based off of the Fantastic Four. Um, Captain America had Invisible Woman and Human Torch super rares, which were really cool. Uh, Invisible Woman had like a barrier thing, and Human Torch had like a flame bubble you could put around them. I, I, I've just been a big fan of Fantastic Four ever since it's been in Hero Clicks. So um, I'm just, I'm really happy to have them back in Hero Clicks form. I'm I'm looking forward to the set in July. Um, you know, you know me. I, I'm always you know. There's always a negative tone to some of this stuff. I'm gonna try not to really harp on it too much. But there are a lot of good things in the Fantastic Four set coming out in July. But this starter, this starter, I'm almost. Uh, I was gonna say I'm almost more excited to get this starter than I am to get the set. But this starter is such a good product. I'm just gonna I'm gonna shield it before I even started this whole thing. This product is such a good product. Uh, there's Right now, there's two starter sets currently available. You can get the Fantastic Four starter set, or you can get the Justice League Unlimited starter set. This one is a much higher quality product. So if you're looking to start the game off, this is the starter to get. Um, it comes with a lot of cool stuff that you're not going to get in other starters. Um, you're, you're going to get some nice stuff in here. You, you won't even get in the Justice League Unlimited starter. So, um, get this starter. It's $34.99 at your local comic book or gaming store. You can always ask them to order it for you online. You can also order it online from WizKids store. Um, same price. Um, MSRP that $34.99. Um, but, so it's a little bit more expensive than some of the older starters, but... For what you get in this, this is almost like a quasi board game almost because it comes with scenario cards which allow you to play through a storyline. Um, a storyline with the Fantastic Four, Silver Surfer, and Doctor Doom, 
all the way from the very beginning of Thane getting ambushed by uh, Yancey Town Boys or Yancey Gang Boys or whatever the heck they are, uh, all the way to uh, saving Silver Surfer from Doctor Doom and maybe facing off against Cosmic Doom. Uh, it's a it's a really fun multi multi chapter storyline that you get to play through uh, with the scenario stuff in here. Uh, the Just League Unlimited one is not as uh, interesting in my opinion um, this one you got you got to get this product well let's open this thing up and I'm gonna just go show you the different sculpts you're gonna get show you all the stuff you're gonna get in this product this again this is a great perfect product absolute perfect product for anybody looking to start out the game so I already already cut the tape we got a bag of stuff a bag of stuff they, they put a lot of stuff in there Here's the sculpts, okay? I love I love the box. The box is beautiful. Um, but let's see. Okay, we got some sculpts. Okay, first off, here's some dice. Maybe I should have pulled this, all got all this out of here, but it's going to make some noise, so. So we have some dice. Um, you know, so if you know anything about WizKids, uh, every time... Or Heroclix, uh, every time a set comes out, we always have a dice and token set. Um, tokens for when you are given actions to characters. And dice for uh, just rolling for random stuff in the game. And uh, and whenever we get a new set of those things, we always have dice with a set symbol on there. But uh, this time, uh, Fantastic Four, they couldn't put it on the sixth side. Uh, because that would be really confusing to have a four on the six side. That's usually where they put the logo is either on the one side or the six side. But this time they actually put it on the four side, which is really awesome. It it is right. But the bad thing is when you roll, <laughs> when you roll two fours and you're gonna be like, yeah, critical hit, critical hit, crit. No, no, no. You just rolled an eight, and it's like, oh, and you missed because I had a twenty-one defense. Oh. Darn. Anyways, those are the dice. Uh, we got some cool sculpts. So I gotta get these out of here very carefully. Very carefully. Oh. Okay, there's that one. Oh, we don't want to show them off yet. Um, oh man, the paint jobs on these seem really nice. There's thing. Yep, yeah, yep, yep. Sue Storm. Man, I love that Sue Storm sculpt. The Reed Richards sculpt is not my favorite, though. I'll, I'll be I'll be honest. I I think the Reed Richards sculpt is probably the weakest of them all. Uh -huh. Okay. I was kind of worried it's gonna break off. I think they are switch clicks, which is if you don't know anything about switch clicks, is basically you can take the sculpt off the doll, and for some odd reason that's they're like that. Sometimes uh, they've done that with the Regenesis pieces, which was the X Men storyline set where uh, they came out with paintable versions, like black and white paintable versions that you could paint your own and then swap the sculpts. So, you know, they might do that with Fantastic Four. I wouldn't mind it, just because we'd have a brand new dial for all the characters to use. That'd be kind of cool. Anyways, let's just look, let's look at the sculpts. Let's look at the sculpts. Uh, we we got to start out with this dude. This dude looks pretty awesome. He, he is the Doom. He is the Doom Bringer. He is Dr. Doom. Uh... Uh, the blast is very cool in his hand. Oh, let's see. Maybe I can like, or move it over. There we go. Um, that that blast is very cool in his hand. Um, oh, you can even see like he has like a gun, like a like a little pocket there. The paint jobs it, again, it's pretty good. Like you can see on the arm, you can actually see. It's not just like solid gray. It looks like they like black washed it. You know, you know, like. They put some like uh like like lightly covered it in like ink so that it brings out the details a little bit more. Um his his suit, the you know, the the his belt you can see the holes in the belt buckle, dang. There is a lot of detail in this in this design. Um Oh man, that, that green cape. That green cape, dude. He has Doctor Doom team ability, which is a brand new team ability. They they, they changed it. it. Used to be wild card, it's something different now. Oh, I like that blast. That blast, too. Dr. Doom has always been such a really, really cool character. Because he's been, like, a bad guy. But he's been, like, a multifaceted bad guy. And, like, he's always been this, like, he's not just a genius. 
but he's like a mystical genius and that like has robots it's it's he's like he takes all the good cool qualities of other villains and just combines them into him you know um but it's a very very cool sculpt the eyes the eyes are kind of weird w were they supposed to be like uh like human colored eyes or something i don't know either way it, it still looks really really cool uh very very cool sculpt um Again, these sculpts were not used. We've seen all the sculpts from the Fantastic Four set coming out later in this month. These sculpts were not used in the set. So unlike the Justice League Unlimited starter, which reuses all the sculpts from the main set, all these sculpts are 100% unique. Now, I think they were planning on repainting the sculpts as Ellie's in the Galactus event, summer, line of, summer, summer storyline event. But uh, I don't think that event's happening because of coronavirus and everything. So, anyways, let's let let's. Let, okay, that was Doctor Doom and his glorious uh, magnificence. Uh, let's look at Reed Richards. <laughs> what can I say? What can I say, dude? He uh he got all twisted up like a pretzel. I mean, I mean, has he ever been in that pose before? Maybe. Um, is it a very, uh, is it a very, uh, sinister or, uh, uh, you know, uh, uh, I don't know. Does it make bad guys fear him? Probably not. Um, but this is, this, this is Reed Richards. Um, he looks like, he looks like he's trying to do yoga and kind of failing. And it, it's kind of weird because, like, if it, it, it kind of looks like, like, he has, like, this, Quasimodo hump kinda it's 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 a very weird sculpt I think my my friend was like why don't you like bend him upwards I think he was supposed to kind of look like this see if I can get him to like bend up oh switch clicks haha -ha! switch clicks <laughs> I for a second I thought he broke for a second I thought he broke and I was going Oh my god, he broke while I was recording this. But no, it's switch clicks. So as you can see, the holes right there in the base, um, those are built in. And then the the base is made in such a way that you can just click it right back in there. Um, so I mean, so if they do come out with another Reed Richards with switch clicks with a different sculpt, I can just say, uh, see a pretzel Richards, you know? Um, but yet, yeah, basically what he was suggesting um, he was supposed to look like is, let's see, I gotta hold down the base. Like, if you bend him upwards, let's see, how can I do this? Bend him upwards, you know? And it was more like this. Um, maybe that was supposed to be more like how he was supposed to look. But what ends up happening is he just, like, folds down over time. And, uh, he looks like he's trying to, like, fight a squirrel. He's like... I'm gonna get you, squirrel. I'm coming down to your level. Here we go. Anyways, let's move on. Uh, that's Mr. Fantastic. Uh, he is... He's he's an awesome character. I, I, I really like his character. Uh, the sculpt is not the best sculpt in the world. But that's about the only one in this thing that's like not the best sculpt in the world. Um, let's move on to um, The Thing. Um, the Thing is awesome. The thing is pretty awesome. Look at that sculpt. I mean, look at the eye. The eye has a lot of good detail. The mouth, the mouth has a lot of good detail. The rocks look really good on him. Um, yeah, look at the face. The face has amazing detail. I'm just looking at it and being like, wow, you can see the expression really, really well. Um, I, 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 these definitely got extra, uh, extra love. Um, extra love from the painters i definitely think you know some of that you're paying 35 dollars for you're getting like a better paint job um and the pose is nice um uh, i think the scale is a little bit off i think he should be a little bit bigger um but the pose is really nice i really do like that pose he's just like holding it back and he's gonna punch you uh it's clobbering time as he says um Man, that was the weakest It's Clobbering Time in the history of It's Clobbering Time. 
Okay, let, let me do it better. Let me do it better, okay? Mm, ben Grimm. Oh, yeah. He has a New York accent. Yeah, I don't know if that's New York, but it's globbering time. That's, that's more appropriate, okay? That's more appropriate than it's globbering time. Um, anyways, Ben Grimm. Gotta love him. Um, I think, oh, oh, these have some really great keywords. We will get to it in a second. Um, but he has some good keywords and a, and a pretty cool sculpt. Okay, who do I want to do? I guess we got to do Human Torch. I, I guess we got to do Human Torch next. Because I'm like, the other two are probably my two favorites. I mean, other than Doctor Doom. I don't know. Human Torch? That, it's really cool. I don't know if you can tell, but that's like a clear, a clear, uh, orange. Um, there's a clear orange, uh, flame going up his backside. Um... That's that's what I say every time I eat Taco Bell. Um, but um, it's it's a nice sculpt. It's it's really nice. Uh, the, his whole body isn't clear. A lot of the times in the past when they've done a Human Torch sculpt, uh, it's either been like uh, all orange or all clear. This is like a combination of the two. It's actually really interesting. It looks like his hair. <laughs> he looks like he has like a flaming um, like old like disco hair kind of. Don't he? Don't he? Like, like flaming hair, like, you know? Uh, it's kind of interesting. Um, and he looks like he's, like, shooting out fire, which is kind of cool. Um, it's it's a nice sculpt. It's it's a nice sculpt. Uh, and he has a big red four on his chest, which is cool. That's a cool sculpt. Like, all, like a lot of these are, like, like super rare or, like, like valuable rare level sculpts didn't like i would say i mean even reed is probably a rare sculpt just because if they wanted him to be like a common uncommon sculpt they would just have him standing there like just like not uh not bent in any way um or not stretched in any way but he's like actually stretching which makes me which makes me definitely think he's like that's like a rare level sculpt um, but definitely some of these are super rare level sculpts. The Doctor Doom is definitely a super rare level sculpt. And these two next ones are absolutely super rare level sculpts. A lot of time and, and like focus was put into the design of these. Okay, um, I guess we gotta do Sue Storm. Sue Storm flying on her, uh, little invisible disc. Um, I guess that was her powers, um, you know... She's been represented in so many different ways in Hero Clicks throughout the years. Um, I, I kind of get lost in like what her powers were exactly. Like Johnny Storm has always just been like, I'm going to range attack you. Thing has always been, I'm going to close combat attack you. Uh, Mr. Fantastic's always been, I'm going to tie you up and I have like outwit and perplex. And Doctor Doom's always been like, I'm really, I'm really strong. Um, I'm hard to hurt, and I can blast you, and maybe outwitch you, because I'm kind of smart, too. But Sue Storm has been, like, represented in so many different ways, between, like, telekinesis, throwing people, to, like, barrier, to, I mean, just, like, uh, being invisible with stealth. Um, it's, it's, I, wasn't her power just originally, like, invisibility? But I guess, like, she found she could, like, put up a barrier, um, and now she can, like, use the barrier and, like levitate with it i don't know i don't know but still that's what she's doing here she's basically she has a barrier underneath her feet and she's kind of holding on to barrier discs or something and she's kind of flying through the air as you can see she does have wing so uh she is flying uh which eh, i kind of I, I mean human torch is flying thing is not reed richards is not so i guess that's fine i mean two flyers two non-flyers that works i guess um, still, the sculpt is really nice. This is like a very uh, original looking suit. Uh, I guess Reed also had like a very original suit thing. Yeah, I guess it was. A yeah, I guess they all kind of had an original looking suit, didn't they? Um, and uh, it's just it's, it's just a really nice thing. Um, I like I like the way it looks with the the thing. It's definitely a super rare looking sculpt. Definitely, definitely, definitely a super rare looking sculpt. Uh, let's move on to the next piece. This dude, it is awesome to have a new one of this dude. Uh, I'm gonna, you know, he's vital to the storyline. Um, he's vital to so many different things. So he is the Silver Surfer. 
Um, it, it's a it's a cool looking sculpt. It I think it's cool. My friend my friend said, "Oh, I can't believe you know his surfboard's so small." I don't know. I mean, I don't. I I've never surfed, so I don't really know exactly like how much you know how long a surfboard has to be to, uh, compared to how tall you are or whatever. Um, he's definitely tall because you can see just uh, squatting, squatting like his his leg is probably a, a third or a quarter the size of uh, ju just his upper thigh is a quarter the size uh so probably his leg if he was standing straight up he his leg would be half the size of the surfboard so maybe the surfboard does need to be bigger but i like the cosmic blast in his hand it's like a, like he's gonna blast somebody while he's surfing he definitely looks he, he's posed in an, an interesting pose like he's like flying at a curve and blasting somebody like he's surfing like he's actually surfing you know um it it, it is a nice sculpt um the silver looks really nice um it's nice it is nice uh his eye kind of looks weird uh i i don't know if they misplaced mis mispainted his eye or something but um but uh yeah it, it's a nice sculpt i all these are really really nice sculpts and uh it, it's just really nice to have them does he have a 19 defense starting out he does have a 19 defense starting out wow he also has uh defenders team ability and Gal and power cosmic but we will get into that later um very cool looking sculpts very 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 cool looking sculpts i'm just so happy to have them let's let's look into what other stuff comes in this starter um we have a lot to talk about basically um i'm trying to get trying to get it all out of the bag it's not coming out of the bag let's see now okay oh there's our character cards and it comes with multiple maps you got to have maps to play this game let's look at the maps first off um so we have two different maps but i believe they're also double-sided let me just double check yep 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 so we have testing grounds outdoor doom's castle outdoor okay that's one set of maps and then we have reed's lab indoor and yancey street outdoor so um i'm not, I'm not really going to go too much into the maps um three outdoor maps one indoor map one may be like a quasi outdoor indoor map i don't know um they have it looks like they do have uh location effects which is usually like if you pay an extra five dollars uh you can do something special on the map um these maps are vital for telling that story in the scenarios like i said it starts out on the streets it works in the reed's lab then it works in the testing grounds then it works in the doom's castle and it's nice having those four different locations where you can have you know a different battle in each location so it, it's nice having the different options for maps um let's see uh the doom's castle has reign of terror for five points or zero points if every character on your starting force has the latveria keyword that's kind of cool so if you have a latveria theme team then this map bonus costs you nothing i like that i do like that a lot actually i'm a big theme team person so um at the beginning of the game choose a friendly character once per turn when that character rolls for leadership, you may re-roll that result. That's nifty. That's always nifty. Um, if that character is named Dr. Doom, they increase their role for leadership by plus one. I mean, are you going to play a Laveria theme team without Dr. Doom? Like, really? Um, Constellation. So, Constellation is if you, don't whip, if you don't win initiative and don't get to pick the map, even though you paid five points or even zero points in this case, uh, if you had a Laveria, Laveria theme team, um, you get an extra effect on whatever map you actually end up playing on. Once per game, when a friendly character would roll for leadership, they automatically succeed. That's kind of cool. I mean, that's kind of cool, dude. I mean, it, it does. It, you don't even have. You don't even have to be Doctor Doom in that case. So if you if you have if you have hmm hmm. So even if you don't have a Laveria theme team, if you just pay five points. And you lose map control, then once per game you can automatic automatically succeed leadership for five points. That's not horrible. I mean, that's really not horrible. Um, let me let me glance over at the other one. I'm not. I'm trying. I'm trying not to make this a 40, 40 minute video, people. 
Oh god, it's already 24 minutes. Eh. Um. Okay, location bonus. I can't. Okay, here's one. Here one. This is for Reed's lab. Uh, five points or zero points if everyone on your starting force, minimal four, so you have to have four characters, has the Fantastic Four keyword. Okay, nice. That's zero points or five points if it doesn't meet that. Um, okay, they have the map has orange zones, and when a friendly character is in an orange zone, oh, it, when a friendly character in an orange zone attacks or is attacked, modify the corresponding combat value plus one. What? Oh, it has one, two, three, four, and that attacks attack, range, defense, damage. If that character is Mr. Fantastic, you can choose which combat value except speed to modify. Hmm. Okay, it's Reed's lab. It makes sense he gets the biggest bonus from it. And then Constellation. At the beginning of the game, generate four past experiment markers anywhere on the map, not within four squares of a starting area. Friendly characters occupying those friendly markers modify attack plus one. So if you, if you have a Fantastic Four theme team, you can play this map for zero points, and, it, and if you don't get map control, you still get that effect. That's kind of nifty. That's kind of nifty. Again, you got to have the maps for the scenarios because they're 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 you got to have them for that, um, and they're cool. Uh, so like like most starters uh, starter sets, it comes with objects. So you need objects to play the game, and one fell on already. Let's see, that's that. It also comes with terrain markers, like smoke cloud, barrier, uh, special markers, all that kind of stuff. Again, you need those to play the game. That's why I recommend people buy the starter set if you want to start playing the game. Also, it comes with two very important things, because this game is super complicated. It comes with a power ability card that breaks down what every single power does. And a rule book that explains how to play the game and all the little tricky parts of it. So, again, you need that if you're going to play the game. And that's why you buy a starter set. Because Fast Forces do not come with that stuff. And Booster Packs do not come with that stuff. You have to buy a starter set to get that stuff. So, okay. Uh, before we move on to uh, the scenarios. I'm going to end the end, end with the scenarios. I think, those are the, I think the scenarios are probably the coolest part of the starter set. Sorry, that's loud. Okay. Oh, man. We got lots of character... Oh, that's the scenarios taking up half the pack. Okay, gotcha, gotcha, gotcha. Okay, so we got... Some, we're gonna, we're going to just, you know, go over... One thing I do want to mention. I want to mention the keywords on all these pieces. Because the Fantastic Four, even though they haven't been in Hero Clicks for years, they have been intertwined within the Marvel Universe for many years. So you're going to you're gonna hear some keywords on these that these Fantastic Four members probably never had before in Hero Clicks, But now they do, and it's wicked awesome. Okay, um... Now the one, the, the two I would say are probably deviations are Doctor Doom and Silver Surfer. They have the keywords you expect. Doctor Doom is Cabal, Latveria. Is Latveria a new keyword? I don't remember that being that many Latveria keyword to pieces in the past. It might be a new keyword. Armor, cosmic, mystical, politician, ruler, and scientist. He has a lot of really nice generic keywords. Uh, a ruler theme team is kind of fun. Doctor Doom. Okay. Only Doom is fit to rule, leadership, but instead removes the action token from himself. When Doctor Doom uses it and succeeds until your next turn, he has can see through hindering and protected mind control outwit. Other powers and abilities can't remove action tokens from Doctor Doom. Hmm. Okay. So, like, does that mean other characters cannot leadership off tokens off him? Hmm. That's interesting. But the cool thing is if you're playing the Laveria map or the Doom's Castle map, you can get that guaranteed once per game. Oh, it's a consolation, isn't it? Either way, he would get a plus one to the leadership on that map, I think, right? I think so. So that's cool. So he can just like keep going and keep going and keep going. Okay. Uh, Silver Surfer has Annihilators, Defenders, Cosmic, and Herald. What's really cool is Silver Surfer has Defenders keyword and Defenders team ability, meaning that he can share his defense with other defenders with the team ability that are adjacent to him. There's been many times in the past when a character has had Defenders keyword but not Defenders team ability, meaning, yeah, you can have them on the same theme team, but they're not going to be able to share the defense between each other. And that's kind of like, what's the point then? You know? 
Like that, that's what the whole team ability does is two people with the defender's team ability can share their defense. But if one has it and one doesn't, well, guess what? It doesn't work. Um, so I'm happy that he has the team ability and the keyword. Silver Surfer, he has a trait, Behold the Power Cosmic Free. Choose a standard attack power until your next turn. Silver Surfer can use the chosen power and, and the characters he hits can't use the chosen power. So, a standard attack power. So he could be like, he starts out, yeah, some of his clicks have running shots. So you may choose like Pulse Wave and, or Psychic Blast. And so you can get through the opponent's defenses. But then if you hit them, they cannot use Pulse Wave or Psychic Blast against you. Which would be nice. It would help make it harder for you to be... Uh, and he can't be outwitted because he has Power Cosmic. So that would make him a lot more durable. If he chose Psyche Blast and he was just like... even Well, he has to hit him, right? Well, no, he doesn't hit. He, has to, he doesn't have to hit him with the power. If he chooses the power and hits them with an attack, um, then they can't use the Chosen Power. When Silver Surfer uses hypersonic speed, he may be given a range action at no cost instead of making an attack. Wow. So, normally with hypersonic speed, you can move, hit somebody with a basic attack, and then move again. Um, but this dude can use a, use a range instead. So he can hypersonic up, psychic blast you, and hypersonic back away. That's pretty good. I mean, that that's he's pretty darn strong. Mr. Fantastic. He has Fantastic Four keyword, Illuminati, Celebrity, and Scientist. Illuminati's cool. Uh, you know, they were a group, basically, that were a, a bunch of the smartest peop heroes in the Marvel Universe. T uh, thought, well, we can maybe figure out how the world should run better than anybody else. So let's just make a underground secret group that will orchestrate stuff behind the scenes. They almost sound like bad guys, and they almost were. So, um... He doesn't have as many because he's Mr. Fantastic. So there was a while when Mr. Fantastic and Visible Woman were kind of gone from the scene and Human Torch and Thing were kind of like, what do we do now? So they so they will have a few more different keywords which are interesting. Anyways, Mr. Fantastic's trait is I'm pretty good at multitasking. He has plasticity and shape change. When Mr. Fantastic uses shape change, after resolutions, place that D6 with that result on this card. Replacing any here. Oh lord, is this how it's going to go? I, 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 see, I, I see something happening. Giant Reach X, where X is 2 or the value of that die on this card, whichever is greater. So if he rolls a 5 or a 6 for shape change, it just says, regardless of the result, after resolutions, place it on, on the D6 on the result. Interesting. So if he rolls like a 6 on shape change, and he's like, nope, can't target me, next turn he has Giant Reach 6. Does it just um, just stay on the card until he uses shape change again or something? Yeah, you have to you have to put the D6 on there after shape change. So I guess it would stay on there until he uses shape change again. So he could have like he has zero range normally, other than like outwit and maybe perplex if he can use it, um, having like a minimum six. But having giant reach six is pretty pretty interesting. Oh, that was Mr. Fantastic. You probably don't want to see him anyways. He's the uh, he's the pretzel looking dude. Anyways, Invisible Woman has Fantastic Four, Lady Liberators, Celebrity, and Scientist keyword. Okay, keywords. Um, hide and seek, free. Choose one until your next turn. Opposing characters can't target Invisible Woman until they begin, unless they begin their turn within three squares of her. Or terrain markers are considered clear for line of fire this turn. If Invisible is with Invisible Woman is within four squares of them. Okay, so she can either make it harder to target her, or she can make her friendly characters be able to see through walls and stuff. That's kind of cool. That's kind of cool. Um, Human Torch has Fantastic Four Inhumans keyword. That's cool. We've had some new Inhumans come out lately. Uh, in Earth X set, uh, in the Fantastic Four set, we got a few more too. Uh, there might have been a few more in other sets too. Spider-Man Family. Ooh, that, that's a great keyword. Um... There's been a, a recurring issue with Spider-Man family theme teams. They all the Spider-Man team ability is wild card, meaning you can copy the team ability of another friendly character, um, basically for the rest of the game. Um, but the problem is, if everybody on your team has the Spider-Man team ability, then there really is no team ability to copy. But now you have a Spider-Man family team ability. 
a Spider-Man family character that has a team ability to copy. And it's actually a really good team ability to copy because um, when someone dies, when a Fantastic Four team ability character dies, everybody else with a team ability heals up one click. So it actually works out really good to uh, copy it on a bunch of different characters because then they're all healing up when one dies. So I'm, I'm really happy to see Spider-Man Family keyword on Human Torch. I think the last one that had that was the Spider-Man Family team base. And I really didn't like any of, a lot of those pieces. So great, great keyword to have on him. He also has Celebrity and Herald. Herald? Hmm. I wonder if I could use him in that Herald storyline I'm thinking about. Anyways, Human Torch. Flame Trail. This is his trait. Once per turn for all characters with this trait. When Human Torch moves, after resolution, choose a character he moved through or adjacent to and deal it one penetrating damage. We're seeing that a little bit more often nowadays, like with the Captain Marvel, and then there's a new piece that does that too. What was it? Was it a Ghost Rider that does that? Or, um... Uh, I can't remember. But basically, so, when he moves, and he's flying so he can move around or through opposing characters as he's moving. When he moves, after resolution, choose a character he moved through or adjacent to and deal it one penetrating damage. So that's a cool way, even if you didn't hit him, even if you didn't even make an attack that turn. As long as you moved, um, and it's once per turn. I was going to say, if you could somehow make him move multiple times in a turn, he could just be like... One penetrating, one penetrating, one penetrating. But no, that won't work. Still, that's cool. That's cool. That's a cool little effect. Anyways, the thing has Fantastic Four, Guardians of the Galaxy. That is a really cool keyword. There's not enough Guardians of the Galaxy pieces. Um, I, I thought it was really cool when they gave Kitty Pride the keyword. Um, I think... You know, so, so, uh, some random characters have had it here and there because they've been on the team for a little bit. So again, I'm really happy for Spider-Man Family keyword and Gal Guardians of the Galaxy keyword. Uh, really cool. Defenders is nice. I don't think I'd ever use Lady Liberators, but still, good keywords. Um, we almost got them all on there. He has, it's clobbering time. Power, if no other friendly character has been placed this turn, choose an opposing character that's within four squares of a friendly character with the Fantastic Four keyword that was attacked since your last turn. Place the thing such that he can make a close attack targeting the chosen character, then do so. If he hits and the attack roll is 10 or, 10 or more, after resolutions, remove an action token from him. So he basically has Colossal Retaliation, but thankfully they've, uh, Whiskets have kind of uh, reduce the potency of it instead of just being able to jump all the way across the field and hit somebody he has to be within four squares uh choose an opposing character that's within four squares of a friendly character with the fantastic four keyword oh hmm so he can jump all the way across the field it looks like it but it has it has to be a Opposing character that's within four squares of a friendly character with the Fantastic Four keyword that was attacked since your last turn. Now you would have to be dealt damage if they were attacked. So if they attacked uh, Sue, or no, they attacked. Oh, they. Oh, no, nah, that wouldn't work because he shape change. You weren't because it, it shifts the target. But let's say they attacked Sue and she had super senses or something, and she evaded it he could still even if even though she didn't take any damage he could still jump all the way across the field and smack them as long as they were within four of sue uh or an, yeah yeah basically um that's kind of cool that's kind of cool okay uh, let's talk about the scenarios we gotta we gotta talk about the scenarios they are the thing i am the most excited about we're coming up on 40 minutes in this video lordy i'm gonna try to keep it under an hour i'm gonna try to keep it under an hour so we have these scenarios. Um, they go scenario A, B, C, D, E, F, G, H. Um, basically, it, it if you think about it as a storyline, think about it as like one of those old uh, um, choose your own adventure books, where you would you would you follow the storyline, and then you'd be like, if you would do this, turn the page four. If you would do that, turn the page twelve. And then from there, the story would continue, and then there'd be another fork in the road. If you would do that, turn to page 20. If you would do this, turn to page 22. And then it would keep going or whatever, you know. Um, that's kind of how these scenario things work. 
basically uh, it, it's not really choice based anymore, but it's based off of who wins the game. Uh, so in the first scenario, it's Ben Grimm versus a whole bunch of Yancey Street Gang thugs, and we actually have um, we actually have bystanders for them, which is actually really cool. Let's see if I can show you a bystander, um, a Yancey gang. I guess they're wearing masks with the thing's face on them because they're just like uh, bad idiots and stuff. Um, but he's facing a whole bunch of them. Looks like they have sidestep, empower, and precision strike. So they can actually, if they're together uh, next to each other, they can actually boost their each or their damage values. Precision strike allows them to get through any kind of defense for the most part, and sidestep means they can just always keep moving. These are actually uh, kind of menacing. They have a 15 point uh, value, point value. Does that mean these can be played from out, uh, other than in the scenarios? That'd be interesting. Um, so basically, if Ben wins against the Yancey gang, then you move on to the scenario where Ben, where Ben was in time to help out the Reed and Sue in his lab, um, and while they're facing off against Doom and the Doombots. But if Thang does not win that game. Then both him and Johnny Storm show up late to the battle, and Reed and Sue end up being on their last starting click, and it's a much harder battle. So you start out with one beginning scenario, which branches off into two different scenarios. Either uh, Ben and Johnny are on time, and it's the Fantastic Four. They're full point. Uh, they're Fantastic Four. They're, they're top setting, or not the top setting, but they're on their first click against the Doom and his Doom bots. Or they're late, and it's a much harder fight. Then at that point, it branches off again. But this is not really based off of. Uh, it can go either way both times. It just depends on. Let's see. Uh, it can go D or E or D or E. Yeah. It just depends on if you win or lose, basically. Um, how does that work exactly? Uh, if you win, go on the D. Um, D, go on the D. Okay. Okay, so they have the same result. If they win, they go on the D. If they lose, they go on the E. But it's much harder to win in the scenario where they're late to the battle. So that's where it's kind of like, it's almost like a reverse choice there. Um, your choice is locked in either way, but depending on how the first choice went, it it, it, you know, it makes it easier or harder. So let's say uh, the Fantastic Four, um, in either scenario, they beat Doom. Well, um, that means they were able to track down Doom before he could before he could capture Silver Surfer, and then that scenario D. They were able to track down Doom before he caught Silver Surfer, and they actually get to fight alongside Silver Surfer, I believe, to fight off Doom and Doombots. Uh, but let's say they lost the fight against Doom and the Doombots in the first in the second battle. Then they show up late to save the Silver Surfer, and um, then you, you also fight off against Doom and stuff. But now Doom is like rigged explosions, and and it's a much harder fight. And now this is where this is where it leads into the, the finale, because there's three different endings for this thing. There's three different endings, and and they're shooting off fireworks if you can hear it. Go Johnny. <laughs> Anyways, um, three different endings to this storyline. It depends on if if the Fantastic Four was in time to save Silver Surfer, and they beat Doctor Doom. If okay, so there's multi. Here's here's the here's the 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 the, the, the scenario or the the the, uh, the results. Okay, one, Fantastic Four. Okay, let's start on this side. One, Fantastic Four was in time to save Silver Surfer, and they beat Doctor Doom. Um, if if both of those conditions are met, then you go on to the best ending where they're just fighting against Doom in his castle, and that's about it. Then there's another scenario where mm. it's they were late to uh, save Silver Surfer, but they still beat the Doombots. If that happens, then Doctor Doom was able to absorb some of Silver Surfer, so he is stronger, and it's a it's it's a it's a harder fight. 
Now that also scenario happens again. So if Fantastic Four was late, but they still beat the Doombots, or Fantastic Four was on time, but they lost to the Doombots, then you get the same exact scenario where you're fighting like a powered up Doctor Doom. So you have the good ending, the okay ending, but then you also have a bad ending. Where if, if the Fantastic Four were late to the fight to save the Silver Surfer, and they also lost to the Doombots and the explosions and all that kind of stuff, then you get the worst case scenario, uh, um, worst case scenario, basically, where Doctor Doom has absorbed Silver Surfer's powers completely, and he is Cosmic Doom. Uh, let me see if I have, what, what's it called? It is called, um, Cosmic Doom. That's what it's called. So you have, Apprehend Doom is, Apprehend Doom is, uh, best case scenario. You're still gonna have to fight Doctor Doom. But um, it's not the worst case scenario. Then you have Save the Surfer, which is kind of the middle ground. They still need, I guess you still need to save Surfer, but um, it's not, Dr. Doom's not too strong. Um, and then you have Cosmic Doom, which is the worst case scenario where um, Doom has absorbed Silver Surfer. And it's a much harder fight because he has Silver Surfer attached to him. So he, he's, he's, he has the powers, some of the powers of, Doc, of Silver Surfer. It's a, it's a much harder fight. These scenarios are so cool. It, they let me sh let me show you like the beginning one. Even just like the the basic one that's just like um let me use him as like a wall. Oh dang. You oh you can kind of see. Let's see. Um man, is there any way to get this to stand up all right? So you can kind of see on there where it kind of breaks it down. This is the map you're playing on. This is the setup. These are special rules. Uh, it goes into even more special rules on the back. Um, man, this is not want to stand up here. I didn't think of, I didn't think about showing off the cards. It goes even to more special rules about all this kind of stuff. It's really cool how it breaks it down. And then at the very bottom, if uh, if the pickpocket is revealed. Basically, Thing has beat the, 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 the thugs, then you go on to Scenario B. But if the Thing is KO'd by the thugs, then you go on to Scenario C. And it's really, really interesting. I, I think it's one of their most successful, one of their most, WizKids' most successful concepts. I haven't played through any myself, just because of the coronavirus and everything going on that makes it hard to group up with your friends without, wor I mean, without you know, being afraid to sp spread germs and stuff like that. Um, but uh, one thing I really want to do is get this ready so when we are ready to get back together and play um, at our normal venue that we can bust out some of these scenarios. And I'm hoping the Galactus that comes out in August uh, it used to be a part of the storyline event, but now you're just going to be able to pay $100 and get a, a huge Galactus. Um, I'm hoping... That that will also come with an additional a few scenarios that can add on to this because if you have if you're talking about Silver Surfer and Doctor Doom, Silver Surfer leads to Galactus, and I mean there's no other way or there's no other final you know scenario in my mind than Galactus coming to Earth and and everybody having to team up against Galactus, um, and I could. I, I, I've broken it down online. I've come up with different ideas of like Cosmic Doom trying to be... Galactus comes to Earth and, and he's like, what have you done with my Herald? And Doom Doom is like, I have absorbed your Herald and uh, I will not even be your whole Herald because I am stronger than you are. And then you have to like fight him or something. Or maybe Doom never absorbs Silver Surfer and Galactus comes to Earth and Doom's like, okay, I can't beat this dude. Read, uh, let's call a truce for this one battle, and you have the Fantastic Four, a regular Doom, and maybe even Silver Surfers come to his realization that Galactus is not the best guy in the world or the universe, and you have all the whole group against uh, Galactus. I think that would be really, really cool. I even have thought about like taking some of the people from the Fantastic Four set, um, like we have a Herald Fire Lord that's in the set. And, um, like, having, like, the first wave come to Earth just as heralds. Like, Fire Lord and, um, what, what's that girl? Uh, the girl, uh, it's not Starshine, is she? Um, I can't remember her name, but, 
But the girl Harold that's also in the set, there may be an oh, and and maybe Silver Surfer, I don't know. But you know, and then then we have some new um, we have some new scrolls in the Fantastic Four set and Super Scroll. And I'm like, I'm I'm dreaming of the scenario that in includes scrolls and maybe even using Fantastic Four members that are actually scrolls in disguise and um, just a lot of really cool things. I really think these scenarios. Um, could be a really really fun way to play the game that doesn't wrap doesn't focus doesn't make the players focus so much on um, min, min maxing playing the strongest pieces available just so you can win every single game like if I'm playing a scenario and I'm playing as Dr. Doom you know like part of the fun is just playing the scenario and seeing where the story goes I'm not as concerned about oh if I'm Dr. Doom I gotta win every game like, yeah, you'll play through that scenario, and maybe you'll be a good enough player, and, like, from the very first battle, you'll be like, okay, Yancey, Yancey Thugs beat Thing. Okay, you go into battle. Now, Sue and Reed are on the first click. Yeah, you beat the Fantastic Four. Okay, you go on to the next part. That's another good thing about the scenarios. They continue even, it doesn't matter who loses. They continue. The storyline continues. Um, and that's really nice. It's not like, oh, Thing got beat by the Yancey Thugs. And, well, yeah, Thing's dead. He doesn't ever show up anymore in the rest of the scenario. It's not like that. They, they found a nice way of bringing them back in each, each chapter, regardless of who won or lost. But the story changes still. Um, and that's nice. Um, so I, I really think this could be a really cool mechanic. And I would really like to see more things. And that's why I was kind of disappointed in reading over the Justice League Unlimited scenarios. While the Fantastic Four ones actually got them printed on cards, uh, if you buy the Justice League Unlimited starter set, you actually are just, I think you're just given a piece of paper with a URL on there. And you have to go online and print them out yourself. And I don't, I do not believe it, they come with physical bystanders already printed out. I think you got to print those out too and cut them out. And that's why I tell people, that's why I preface this whole video with buy this starter set this is the the better quality starter set this is the one you want to buy because it comes with bystanders because it comes with scenario cards you don't have to put in the extra work to get all that kind of stuff it comes with unique sculpts that are not used within the same set it comes with some cool maps some cool effects this is even if you didn't play hero clicks you could still buy this product even if you're just a board game player you could still buy this product and enjoy it yeah, it would probably take a while to learn how to play the game and stuff from scratch. But you you would have everything you need just to play through the scenarios and be like, hey, that was fun. And that's it. And you, and you have a, a nifty little box you can put everything back into. Um, it's not it's not exactly like a board game box, but it, 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 it's, a, it's a cool looking box still. Um, but that is the Fantastic Four. That is the Fantastic Four. I have no idea where the box went. I tossed it somewhere. Oh well, um, that is the Fantastic Four uh, starter set uh, for 2020. Um, we have three different starter sets coming out this year. A Fantastic Four one, a Justice League Unlimited one, and then there's like this weird Captain America one that's coming out later that reuses some of the sculpts from the Captain America set, which uh, some are chases reused. Like that, the Ultron is an Ultron chase reused sculpt. Like if you didn't have $100 to pump out to get an Ultron, it's not going to have the same exact dial. But um, but uh, it, it's going to have the same like, sculpt, so it'll look just as cool. And I think one cool thing they are doing with the Captain America starter is all the pieces are going to have two different character cards. They're going to have a basic character card, which kind of just is like, this is basic powers on this doll. And then they're going to have another character card that's going to have a more complicated power set. Because I do feel like one weakness to this starter set is, for someone starting the game from scratch... There are a lot of damn words on this card. And they're going to look at this thing and go, Leadership but instead removes the action token from himself. When Dr. Doom loses and succeeds until your next turn, he has, okay, and protected mind control outwit. Other powers and abilities can't remove action tokens from Dr. Doom. Energy explosion when Dr. Doom hits a range attack after resolutions give each character an action token. If you can't deal that character one penetrating damage, stop toughness. When Dr. Doom is targeted by an attack, you may choose a standard defense power. You haven't chosen this turn. Dr. Doom can use that power for this attack. Outwit free choosing a post character or power. And it's just... They're all like that. They are all like that. Uh, I will say that's probably one one bad thing. I mean, th these are really fleshed out characters. 
um, for the most part. I, I think he probably has the least uh, special powers, Human Torch. But, um, I mean, look at that one. This is one trait. This is one trait. <laughs> but I would say that's prime. The only weakness star this starter set has is it, it may not be that easy to actually start playing with this. But, uh, these, I mean, this is a dream for so many players who wanted new Fantastic Four um, uh, characters, pieces made for the Game of Hero clicks. And I'm super excited to get them. I'm super excited for the Fantastic Four set uh, coming out later this year, or this month. And uh, even though, I mean, I don't like how some of the super rares are not, like, technically Fantastic Four related characters. Uh, and they and they did kind of reuse a bunch of sculpts a bunch of times. I'm still thrilled to have a Fantastic Four set. I still think the common uncommon rares part of the set is very strong and the choices of characters and stuff. Um, and the chases are fantastic. The chases are based off of um, the Battle World, Secret World, Battle World uh, storyline, which we, we really wanted it back in the Secret World, Battle World set, but I guess the Fantastic Four embargo was still happening, so they couldn't give any of those specific characters in there. But now we have them, uh, especially, especially God Doom. We don't even know what that does yet. It's probably going to be bonkers, but... Um, that was the Fantastic Four starter set. I had to make a video. I was so excited about it. I think the scenarios are killer. I can't wait to play through them. Um, everything's really, really cool. <laughs> Here, there's Pretzel Reed. And um, there's Doctor Doom with the cool metal arms. And uh, Sue Storm. And Mr. 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 Surfer. And uh, you got to have the Fantastic Four. There you go. Um... I'm looking forward to all this stuff. It's really cool. I hope if you're out there watching this video that you're trying to be safe. You're wearing a mask and you're washing your hands because that stuff's important. Um, be safe. Stay healthy. Uh, thank you so much for watching this video. And uh, happy 4th of July.